Hey guys, Patriot coming to you tonight. It's been a long time since I did a video and I'm not in the habit of dedicating videos, but I wanted to throw this one out there to Marv Carey. It's M-A-R-V, Carey with a C. Hey man, I appreciate you reaching out to me, checking in, seeing if I'm okay. Yep, uh, everything's great, just been slow on the videos, but thanks for checking in, just hadn't uh, been able to respond to you yet. In any case, this video is going to be about the North American Arms 22 Long Rifle Revolver. What you're sitting there looking at right now is the North American Arms Sidewinder. I've got Corian grips that I have fitted on there. That's just a little tape on the bottom covering a serial number. But uh, a lot of you have probably seen this in various videos, whether it's some of the hiking videos I've done or even some of the skateboarding videos that I've got out there where I've been out testing stoves at night and that sort of thing. But I typically carry this along with a pepper spray and a small knife of some type. So uh, I try to have some essentials there, some defensive essentials, but nice little gun. It's, um, uh, you know, because it's 22 mag and 22 mag is a little bit expensive to, to shoot these days. And it's kind of getting a little bit hard to find. It has been for the last three or four years. I've been doing less shooting with this. Uh, the other thing is this is their large frame, if you can imagine calling that large. But it's actually a large frame uh, North American Arms, as opposed to the smaller frame of the 22 long rifle that you see there. Um, so this one's got the foldable handle on it. And I decided to, to pick this up because I wanted to shoot 22 long rifle. Now you can, in a pinch, you could do it out of this one, but it does let up the inside of the cylinder and you've got a lot of cleaning to do. Otherwise, when you go to stick a 22 mag in there, it can, uh, uh, it won't fit in because the carbon builds up. So you gotta be careful to clean these really well if you shoot 22 long rifle out of a 22 mag cylinder. It is possible. Um, I don't, I wouldn't make a normal practice of it, but in a pinch you can certainly do it. Now just to give you an idea of weight, the Sidewinder, the 22 mag, is 6.8 ounces or 192 grams. And the 22 long rifle with folding grip on it is 5.3 ounces at 150 grams. So not only is it smaller by about a full inch in, in length, but it's, uh, it's also a couple ounces lighter. Now I would consider the 22 mag fairly shootable with this with its handle. Um, it's still going to be kind of a, a one finger wrap grip, but uh, it's certainly possible and you can get pretty accurate with these things and as you'll see in my shooting of, uh, of this one below. When you go to the 22 long rifle, you can see just how much shorter that grip is. I mean it is a little tiny guy. You can see where it ends right there. So if you've just got a normal handle on this, it can be a, a bit tricky to shoot. Uh, it's not to say that you can't master just about anything if you give it, give it enough dedication, uh, but uh, there was other reasons for me doing that and uh, the one is that it covers up the trigger right there which puts an extra element of safety. Now this pistol also has a little cylinder notch here that allows you to line up with the hammer so when the hammer is engaged with that little notch it's not resting on one of the rims of the loaded cartridges so you can roll around with five, round, five rounds in the cylinder and you'll see that also when I shoot. This is just an intro we're gonna get to the shooting here in just a second. Now I wanted to preface things by saying that I realize that these have serious limitations. I don't want to get into a big debate of whether a 22 long rifle or a short barrel 22 long rifle revolver like this or a 22 mag like this is even viable for self-defense. I know that these guns are not a full-size auto. It's not a full-size combat auto of some type. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not one of these, okay? And, uh, and it's not even one of these. You can see the size difference there. Different tools for different purposes. I think if you look at the energy levels and the ballistics testing of uh, some of these rounds, like a 40 grain solid CCI mini mag coming out of here at uh, 860 feet per second, it's a reasonable amount of energy and it's far better than nothing. And if it came down to another critter or another person trying to inflict harm or death upon you, then it's far better than nothing. Now I'm not trying to be presumptuous, but I have probably killed more critters 
with bullets and arrows than 99% of the people watching this video. And a good portion of that has been with a good old 22 long rifle. So I know what they're capable of, so you don't have to tell me if you're on the side that says you shouldn't use a 22 for self-defense. And then the only other thing I wanted to mention before we got into the shooting portion was to say that it's it's really difficult for me to put up a 22 long rifle video, whether it's a rifle or a pistol, without someone rolling in on a razor and a pink helmet and saying that uh, you don't need hearing protection for a 22. I don't wear hearing protection when I'm shooting a 22 because it, quote, hurts me. Some certain ones are uncomfortable, for sure. This would be one of them. That short barrel and the cylinder gap and everything on a little revolver, this thing's got some bark to it. Yes, I always wear hearing protection, and even if it doesn't hurt your ears because you're deaf from something already, or you work in a machine shop, or you've shot your ears out already, well, all you gotta do is look at the science. If you look at impulse noise and decibel levels, you see the 22 is well within that range of hearing damage. So this one's been shot a fair bit, maybe 150 to 200 rounds, and this one just got its first rounds through it a few days ago, and I put 250 rounds through it in the first section, which is what you guys will be watching, and I put another 150 rounds through it in the second session. So I've got 400 rounds, almost a brick of ammo, out of this little 22 long rifle. So um, you'll see here that if I press on the pin on this side and this side. There is two of them. If you pinch squeeze that and then close this, it will close. You can see I've taken the clip off of this. I've added some grip tape to give a little extra grip. If you like this video, I will show you what I did with the grip modification here to tighten this whole assembly up. Uh, typically these are very loose and rattly and have a lot of play in them. I found it a little bit uh, weird and annoying, but I've kind of done a modification here to uh, overcome that. So thanks for watching guys and uh, appreciate you coming to check out the video. Let's go ahead and load this little guy up for you. We're going to do a half cock on the hammer here. Depress this little pin. This takes out the cylinder pin and I'm just holding it in with my fingers right now. You can see the cylinder just comes out like that. We're going to start off with some Federal Classic ammunition. It is high velocity. I'll eventually shoot this here with the CCI mini mag, which is what I'll be carrying in this as my little pocket backup. But let's give this one a try here, and we'll just start off with some of these. We'll just load up that little cylinder there. It always cracks me up how small these are, how intricate the machining is on these little mini revolvers. They really do a nice job. And we'll just load this back in from the right there. I'll kind of pinch it with my fingers just to kind of hold it in place. And then we'll take our pin and we'll load that back in the front. And now it's all the way closed. Rotate the cylinder, that'll lock it in ready to fire. This actually has a safe position whenever one of these little notches right here is aligned with the hammer. So I'm going to move this one clockwise from our perspective inside that little groove see it line up and now the cylinder is locked with the hammer on the adjacent groove in here it can't rotate and none of the rounds are in alignment with the barrel or the hammer so that's its safe carry mode now when this one is stowed away the trigger guard is also covered as you can see starting off here at uh, about five yards and I'm just going to shoot for the very center. Okay, uh, it actually went quite a bit low. So I'm going to 
bring my side alignment up so that I've got the full blade protruding above top strap of the pistol, I should say. And, wow, just slightly left, but uh, elevation perfect. And I believe that one's right next to it. I'm gonna rotate the camera around for the last two shots here. All right, there's our shooting spot. I'm gonna zoom in on the center. You can see my first shot is low. My others are right next to the black there. I've got two more rounds. Uh, I think that's low. Sure, how I ended up back down there, but I am low. And I think that one's near the black. Let's go see. We're gonna do a little half cock there on the hammer. We're gonna come up here. I'm gonna support the cylinder so it doesn't fall out when I remove the pin. I'm gonna remove the pin, and the cylinder is gonna come right out the side like that. You can see each of those has a good solid rim fire strike on it. And then I'm going to use the cylinder pin to knock the empties out. And I've got five empties there. I'll show you my first shot. It's down here. So, six inches. And then my second shot was up here. And then my shirt, my third shot, I don't know, I must have done something with the sight picture, but then my other two were back up there. So it looks like this gun does shoot just a little bit left, but uh, we'll reload and see how it does, and maybe push it out to seven yard. Maybe seven and about a foot. Okay, let's load this guy back up. This time, we're going to use CCI Mini Mag. As far as the 22 long rifle goes out of these little North American Arms short barreled guns, this is one of the best ones out there and it tests very well in ballistic gelatin on uh, many of the uh, reviewer sites. So um, we're going to see how it shoots and perhaps carry this load. We want to make sure that the cylinder pins all the way against the front of the receiver here. And we'll line up our safety notch. Let's see if I can see that in the camera here. And you kind of feel it lock in. And then that hammer blade prevents the cylinder from turning because, like a flat blade screwdriver, it's locked into these little corresponding notches. Now keep in mind I'm not behind the camera, I'm standing well to the side, but I just want to show you how the uh, cylinder does not line up until the hammer is cocked. All right, we're at seven yards plus just a little bit, and we're going to fire at the top left. I'll do a couple shots here, then I'll rotate the camera around so that you guys can see the shots going in. Sights are uh, Little difficult to see, especially in this lighting. They're shaded for me. Okay, I'm just a little bit low on that, about one and a half to two inches. And I'm about uh, three quarters of an inch high and left on that one. And I'm about an inch low and left on that one. Okay, I've rotated the camera around. You can see my first three shots there. I'll fire two more. I do like the sight picture. It's pretty intuitive. And I'll try to show you guys with the camera here in a moment what it looks like. I don't know where that went. It might be uh, a double hole up there at the 10 o'clock position. 
and I I think that one's just slightly low and left. Let's go check those. Yeah, two went up here and my other three went down there. Not a bad little group there, about three inches at 21 feet. Let's go ahead and shoot over on this side, see if we can tighten that up just a little bit. All right, guys, I'm just gonna finish up a box of mini mag here, and I've got uh, 10 rounds left. So let's go ahead and load those up. Keep in mind, I'm not holding off. I'm holding the sight blade dead center. Now I realize the pistol shoots about a half an inch to an inch left with this particular load. So I'm just holding consistently. I kind of felt like I maybe twitched or muzzle dipped a little bit there. I don't know why, just a mental thing. Definitely didn't dip that time. And I think I've got one more shot here. Not bad. I just wanted to show you here that these are actually exposed. And so I can see the hit on the next round. So as I rotate the cylinder, I can already see that that's been struck. Let's have a close up here because I wasn't able to see these for the most part. Hey, not bad. Uh, it's just a little bit tighter than before. Maybe uh, three inches uh, or a little bit less, two and a half versus this one. So I did tighten it up a little bit. Uh, not bad for 22 feet or so. Okay hey guys, we're shooting back here between 10 and 11 yards. Let's go up and check the target. Eight, nine, 10, 11, so it's closer to 11 yards. You can see about the pattern that this thing is doing. That shadow is not helping, is it? But um, this is about a seven inch, maybe a six inch oval here that I drew. And uh, at 11 yards, I mean, you can see the practical accuracy is pretty amazing. And uh, I'm loading and just firing. I've shot every second or so, um, maybe a second and a half. Not real precise aim fire, but you can see that even at this distance, how, how well this actually does. And just to put some perspective on that, okay. You get the idea. It's uh, more than capable of enough accuracy 
uh, even at 10, 11 yards. All right, guys, we're about 12 yards back, or I should say the camera's about 12 yards behind the target right now. We're in the hammer down or safety position, and we're inside the safety notch, which doesn't change anything about the way that you cock it. Just making a point of letting you guys know and we're going to close it up there. Now it's important when you're taking this out, you're drying it, that your hand is not in front of the muzzle obviously. So uh, my way of making sure that when I deploy that handle is this pinch right here. So as long as I've got that pinch, I know that my, my fingers are behind the muzzle and that the hammer cannot come back as I'm cocking this. Once the hammer is back, I can get my hand back into the firing position here. And uh, this one will start with the hand on the gun already inside my pocket. This time I'll start with my hand out of my pocket, but I'll put my hand into the pocket as I feel the situation escalating. Is a minimal device, is a minimal firearm. I think it uh, it does pretty good. You can see our groups there on the target that I'm still keeping them pretty much in that zone that we were shooting stationary. This time we're going to start with the uh, firearm in my palm. Okay, don't wrap that finger over the muzzle. Just a reminder. This time uh, I will retreat or get some distance from my target before I cock to shoot. You guys have seen me do some shooting and some drills and stuff like that in the past, but I really emphasize how important it is if you're doing it with something this small. You really have to have that muzzle awareness. And every little feel is planned out and executed. So this little lobster grip that I have on this thing has to happen every time or I don't do anything. If I don't get that correct grab, then I stop right there. So I get this thing here draw the muzzle or draw the the handle down and now I can come back and get out of the way so just to show you that again this is in my palm okay don't cover the uh, muzzle with your finger I'm coming up underneath this so when this is in my palm I'm going for that lobster claw right here okay so I come up behind that grab that and then the handle comes out never in front of that muzzle. Getting more confidence with it slowly. Haven't had any misses here on any of this stuff, so that's good. 
All right, guys, just finished up 250 rounds of 22s in the little North American Arms revolver. Not a single malfunction or issue or uh, hammer strike that didn't go off. Everything worked completely flawlessly. Uh, about 125 of those rounds were uh, all drills, and I think they're coming along pretty good, getting used to the ergonomics of the handle. As you know, I carried the little 22 mag version before. Didn't have to deploy the handle, but with the handle deployed, this one is more stable. Just a little bit quick, slower to deploy by maybe a second. And I just couldn't leave without saying goodbye, so I just wanted to show you here a couple of comparisons with uh, some revolvers. This is a L-Frame uh, 686 and 38 Super, an older performance center. And uh, you can see the cylinder I mean, the whole frame of, of the actions will almost fit inside the trigger guard, so it kind of gives you an idea of just how small that is. And uh, if we go to an end frame revolver here with a 5-inch barrel on it, the other had a 4-inch barrel, you can see just how tiny this little dude is. In any case, I thought it was just a fun comparison, and I wanted to say goodbye to everyone. So thanks again. Patriot out.